shown you behind the curtain. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> what an absolute delight, the first meeting. Well, the you have a very, very aggressive, detailed agenda. I do, I know. <laughs> Gotta get this done. Yeah, <laughs> well, good... as I said, I'm gonna be um once a ferry gets back, I'm gonna start getting pretty busy and then I'm gonna be gone for a couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. um so I kind of need to front load my time for the next month. Basically. Sure. So but being organized is a good thing. Um yeah. I have already created a uh data folder for uh, the AAC, and uh, and let me bring up that agenda. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Um, well, uh, I printed this out, and I think I made a couple changes since I printed it out. But I'm just going to go with um, what I printed here because it's more or less the same. Um, I guess my first question is. Um, Kind of if I'm just looking for some guidance, um, uh, since there are several other communities in terms of kind of the the pre, you know the ideal size, how how you generally go through the process of recruiting and or um, gaining uh, committee members, um, leadership re requirements. I think, uh, in my view, that one we can kind of set aside a little bit. I, I think we definitely need the chair and a secretary is helpful. Right. Website, we're kind of working on. Um... Well, website and data, that's me. Okay. To, that's and that's not a leadership position. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh... Because as the IT liaison okay. for the advisory committees, that's what I do. Okay. Okay, great. And um, and then just to touch on um, committee expectation guidelines, just because that will feed into the uh, Tom article, which I, I want to get to. But um, okay. I guess right. part of part of my question here today is if if uh, if the goal is to have a Tom article in June. Thanks, June then um yeah, okay that's sort of driving some of these other questions well, yeah. at this point so um yeah i okay. i'm going to announce the committee as a formal entity in the may meeting coming up next wednesday okay right. yeah that yeah. will be the precursor and the lead on in and the intro that more information is to follow uh both in the tome and on the website so you see how that goes. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. have 40 names from which to draw immediately for committee members and then those with interest. Now, what's the ideal for a committee? We're a small community. Yeah. You know, it, you are not going to get a huge committee. You got right. 40 names if you get four, yeah, 10% of those to actually participate you're actually doing very good. Okay. That is a high number. Yeah. Got it? Okay. So you're going to solicit those hopefully before we have the tome on out. Uh -huh. Are you interested in being part of, uh, it's either telephone calls, emails, don't know. I, I didn't notice the list, whether or not you had emails or <coughs> numbers. I do have emails from most of them. They're not on that list. Okay. A, a right. shotgun email would be simple. Okay. And, you know, create a, a list because these are identified people that already have the buzz. Uh -huh. Alan. Okay. Um, I wanted to back up uh, to uh, how did you form the committee and stuff? Um, I'm going to screen share here a second. Um, hopefully. Okay. 
I can grab the right one. Okay, this is the original post that went up on the website front page, okay. which was then pointed to on next door. Um, okay. And it's, it's talking about uh, the history, uh, the, the background of why it happened, how it happened, uh, that Mary approached uh, um, uh, Leica and, uh, and asked if we would form a, an advisory committee. We okay. did. Um, and then she's host, you see here where she's hosting uh, a Zoom meeting right. to begin this committee or to get this committee organized. Okay. So this is the kind of intro type thing that we can do to gather more interested people besides the potential 40 that you already have. Right. Now, what happened was we, the committee, and this is just me on the sidelines basically, but uh, the committee got, um, I forget the exact number, but it was a fair quantity, maybe 12 people uh, at the front end. Uh, actually, I can look at that. The, um, uh, and the, hold on a second. They're actually the, the, the people that are listed as members of huh. the committee uh, with, uh, I think, one that dropped out. Um, and they started having the video meetings, the Zoom meetings, on a steady basis. And you will, you'll tend to see people start to, to drop off. Right. Um, <clears throat> they also went to a, <clears throat> a, a committee only meeting format. Uh, if somebody wanted to attend, they were more than welcome to, but it was not publicly announced because in the beginning it was, it was also, they couldn't keep to the, the agenda. Uh, yeah. So you want to consider those kinds of things. Right. But uh, what we did in the beginning was we did a, uh, a call for people that are interested and at what level. Uh, the question was, you know, do you want to be on the committee? Do you want to just be kept advised of it and stuff? And we generated an email list based on that and a table based on that. Okay. Um, and then it boiled down to the committee members that you'll see here. And the ones that are uh, most uh, active uh, on the public doc committee, it's pr pretty evident. Um, okay. The uh, so that's a a method we could do. We, you're lucky because you've already got a a seed audience. Yes. Way so ahead. That, Way ahead. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so that's um, something you could really. One name I'm going to give you. Okay. To put on off to the side, and that's Jim Dickinson. Oh. Jim's health is not great recently. <clears throat> Jim is not only a pilot who rebuilds and has a variety of different ones. Jim was on the Life Act meeting. He is a curmudgeon. He can be challenging and interesting at times to have in meetings, but he is a major resource. And between he and Dave, they own over a third of the island. Yeah, I've known him a long time. There you okay. go. Yeah, well, if yeah. you know Jim, then you know Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but Jim it, it, is a pilot. Yeah. Oh. And there's that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think your your uh, comment, I think when the, before having a couple of pilots and stuff, I think it's a very good idea. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, just remember, this video is public. The, yeah. Um, but... Um, there are, uh, I don't know how many you need to be pilots and stuff. I, I, I think it'll just, it'll just sort of sort itself out. Uh, 
but you you'll t you'll typically get uh, some members that'll will be it'll filter out so you get a very active core team. Sure. And then you'll get the others that you could use as as advisory for it. Sure. So um, yeah, thank you for all of that. I guess yeah. um, at this point, um, I'm trying to figure out kind of sequentially what what I you know need to be focusing on. So it sounds like you're going to announce this at the next like a meeting. I'll announce it next Wednesday I need that the committee at our last board meeting was formed. Right. And that announcements, et cetera, are forthcoming. Right. And I'm going to use that text that you um, uh, set up for the tome announcement and sent me. That's going into a post that'll be on the main page of the website as well. And again, Leica will the will link to that post from next door. Okay, I don't want you to post it yet because I'm not. No, 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 <laughs> Still no. A draft. <laughs> no. That's that's why I just you were just set up the way you are. Yeah. So you can now go in, and if you go to that community and website resources and stuff, you'll. I will put that post in there, but it's not public. It's a it's a holding spot for things okay. like that. Okay. So you can see how it physically looks. You can edit it. Greg and I could edit. Okay. Uh, you know, any of the administrators can, and the ed and any of the editors. There are quite a few editors actually. Okay. Uh, but you there's there's a lot of people to help you with that kind of stuff. But sure. now you're set up so that you can physically do it and see it without it being on the front page. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, and then it seems like there needs to be a tome article that's finalized. Um, shorter. 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 Yeah, shorter okay. than what the post on the main page could be, because you're you have unlimited space on the website, mm -hmm. literally. Uh-huh. So and the tome, that was one of my questions. Like, what, yeah, is, what is the word limit or suggestion preference? I think he's like two or three hundred words. Greg, yeah, that's where Paul so? likes a couple hundred. Yeah. yeah. About 200 words? Okay. Yeah. That's not enough. You, you, re you really just want to grab their attention and, and direct them to the to website. The website. Okay. And not a specific space on the website, but just our lummyisland.org. That's what it's okay. there. Because okay. when they land there, they're going to see the, the major bulk right. of the data. Okay. And um, and then while we're talking about the tome for a second, I just, I'm, I think it's better to, um, we could say we're going to survey, but I don't, we're not definitely, I don't think, I don't see us ready with a survey for no. a while yet. Because you can, you can, okay. You, you could say it's planned. Right. Um, okay. And those tools are very quickly available. Okay. And it's, uh, okay. So that helps me because that helps me kind of map out what the priorities are for the next um, few weeks. That helps me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and um, who, who can help edit, proofread, that kind of thing? Is there somebody that you know, I do, I, but that that's somebody we'd love to have with the committee. Sure. But I do that, you know, if you need help with any of that. I stuff. just feel, I always feel ultimately, better with a second set of eyes on things. Ultimately, you, I, I have no pride of authorship. I give it to Paul, I give it to Alan, I give it to whoever. I say, hammer on this, make it prettier, do whatever. And both Alan and Paul do that. Yeah, that's, but that's not my primary role. Okay. No, not at all. So, um, yeah, if you need that. I will, if if okay. I'm, it, it all depends on how things work. If you have somebody, you or somebody on the committee mm -hmm. has something that they want on the website or in the tome, uh, you can submit it. And if you submit it to the tome, uh, Paul's going to do his thing with it. Sure. 
if you go to the website, one of the publication team will look at it. Okay. Always and edit. We prefer not to have to. We'll worry about formatting and how to sure. fit the pieces together. Sure. So you, it's just straight text is better for us. You could say you can show uh, titles and things like that. But don't try to get fancy formatting because we're just going to undo all that to get it. I see. Okay. Back in. But if you have somebody that is tech savvy enough and comfortable or wish it would like to be trained how to do that, we greatly encourage that. Okay. Um, okay. Because it lessens the load on the rest of us. Uh, one of the things I, I didn't show you, and I'm not going to right now, uh, is there's over two, oh, there's over 420 pages on the website currently. Okay. You just don't see them all. Yeah. Okay. Because if you did, the menu would be horrendous. Sure. Okay. Um, well, that gives me a lot to chew on. So thank you for all that um, guidance. Um, so I'm going to skip over the sky glass for just a moment um, and just continue. We're talking about the draft outline for the website. I sent, I don't know, it was very short notice. Did you want to, Alan, did you? Um, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I was going to, I had seen the, I didn't realize it was your template basically, but, but that, that works fine. I can totally work with that. And I did kind well, of, it's, I didn't it's, it's not locked in stone. Sure, sure. Uh, like one of the things that um, the public doc has, they have a they have a section that is the reason for the committee, and then they have a section that's their purpose. Right. In other words, why did this? The reason is why did this get asked for? Right. And the purpose is what do we intend to do? Okay. Okay. Uh, now the background that's not that's a little different because there was a background story behind this whole thing uh, that triggered it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have to be there. Um, uh, you, you talked about reference documents and links. They have the same thing. Um, the exact format of yours versus of the aviation committees versus public that could vary. Sure. Okay. Uh, same thing. With, it's, it's, it's a loose, Sure, sure. Format. The only thing we do like to see is the table of contents, what the meetings are, linking to the meetings. Um, it's good to have a reason for why the committee was commit was formed, what its purpose is going to be, which you're going to figure out in the long term, because like public doc, that actually uh, evolved. And then a list of the commitment to the meeting members, a way to contact them, and then go from there. So it's it's pretty open. Okay. Um, well, I I drafted one and sent that to you guys this morning. I was short notice. Sorry, I meant to send it last night. So that's kind uh, of the, what so I'm you, working with at this point. So it's maybe if you guys have a chance to look that over and let me know if there's anything that should uh, not be said, in there or should be included or. So you sent another one this morning? I did. Uh, okay, let me go grab it. It's just a web um, draft, um, uh, like a website draft. Let's see. Find it. Website outline or, or draft draft AC website. Yeah. Okay, let me just open it. Reason? Uh, and you know, it's one of those things every time I look at it, I tweak it a little bit. So um uh, yeah, no, this looks good. This looks a good great great start. Uh and this is one of the reasons I um I said um, I set you up so you can edit the page directly, and I, and I it's not that hard. I can I can show you how to do it. Okay. But so what I what I could do is I can load this in ahead of time for you, so you you can see how it loads. Right. And then if you're comfortable, you can edit it. Okay, but it's not going to be live yet. Nope. 
get in, is not live. Okay. It only gets live once it goes into the menu system. Okay. Okay. So this um, this is just a, a rough draft. You know, this is just like mm -hmm. hammering out some things that. So I would really um, appreciate your your input, in especially um, tone wise. Um, I really it's important to me to keep this positive and um, in collaborative and. Right. Um, so I want to make sure that, you know, I don't, that, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell when you're writing something and you read it a lot. It's, it's right. good. That's where I really appreciate having a second set of eyes. Cause I think, um, you know, like Mary said with the doc, it, I, you know, we're looking to be part of the solution, not right. problems. And, yeah. and I don't want to alarm anybody that, you know, you know, we do rely on um, emergency flight services and, you know, and regional services, we're an island, you know, so, so it's kind of, it's a very, you know, kind of a slippery slope if we've, that I just want to be careful about and mindful. Not, not really. Um, I mean, you did the right thing. I mean, you right up front, you said, this is not what we're talking about. Right. You know, we're okay. not talking about the emergency services. Though. Public doc did the same thing. I said, we're not talking about the emergency services stuff. Yeah. Um, it's two different animals. Okay. It, we're talking about the other cases. Okay. So yeah, as long as that's clarified up front, uh, as far as the tone of it and stuff, um, you want to talk to Greg. Well, that's why I, I'm saying, you know, yeah, sure I'm, you, let me know. I, because... I'm not known for warm and fuzzy. <laughs> you know, I'm not either technically. Well, you do I'm a much, you do, <laughs> you've done, you do very well. well I'm, I, I'm a more of a, Give me the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> we'll beat this thing into work. But yeah. I know, I know I'm not like. Well, uh, I do respect that there's, you know, lots of views and opinions and experiences yeah. on the island and yeah. certainly don't want to ruffle feathers. It's a, you know, so. Oh, oh no, you, you will. Well, it's I know. what you do, you will. I know. Yeah. I know. I, I can walk down the street here and walk home and talk to nobody and I'll still ruffle feathers. I guarantee you. Yeah, well, it's a, it, I get it's, that. It, it works. It's that, it's that way with any community. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just saying. I I, I kind of want to minimum. I guess I I don't want to go in. I want to go in, trying to be mindful of that and right. About that. Yeah, I wanna I wanna <laughs> say one other thing that you might not have thought of. I I want you to be clear that this is passenger aircraft all right okay don't get into the weeds with quadcopters slash drones oh don't, i see what you're saying don't let somebody suck you into the weeds with that human occupied oh human sure sure occupied. yeah 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 okay yeah. It, make sure make sure it's a crystal clear sure sure now uh, uh... As you go down that path, and the one to really clarify, is this strictly noise abatement? Is this public safety, FAA regulation? What are the things that are here? But then again, one of the others that you and I talked about is what can we do down the road? This committee has got multiple applications. What can we do down the road? We had an air patch here. If we have to evacuate the island, is that a consideration? However, there is things there. But noise abatement may be your very top issue here because you're flying too low. But you don't want to make that your sole function right. because if that's your sole function and I'm deaf, I don't care. Right. Right. No, I get that. Or if I don't live directly under the flight path. Like, right. um, like right. when, when, when we first talked, I was like, I don't hear them. Well, turns out I was tooting them out. I, yeah. I'm, I'm right here on Lego Bay, which is not that far from Constitution. Right. And it was funny because like a week after I said, oh, I just heard an aircraft. <laughs> because it sort of had yeah. peaked my, peaked my, turned my ears back on again. Yeah. So, uh, and like Public Talk Committee did, it evolved. Sure, sure. 
and you should expect that. Sure, sure. Kind of thing. Sure. Okay. So, um, so then, can we talk about sky glass for a moment? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, I have already done homework. Good for you. I like it. So have I. I'm really eager to um, start collecting data. I have a you know spreadsheet that's so cumbersome and a gazillion screenshots from different flight apps. So I yeah, yeah. I uh, I've gotten familiar with some of the most you know frequent flyers, I should say. Um, but I'm really curious about what Skyglass will provide in terms of, you know, the data. And I think that's super important for us yeah. to get the actual information. So we know what we're technically, what we're dealing yeah. with. So let me, let me give you a, a technical view on it. Uh, it looks to me like Skyglass is actually taking uh, the other major players data. And merging it. And, and building it into a three-dimensional image. Mm -hmm. That's what they seem to be doing. Uh, there's the actual data of who, what, when, and how, how high, all that stuff is already in the historical database and is being fed in real time. It's in the Spot. historical database of Spy Skyglass or somewhere else? Somewhere else, oh, okay. uh, this other organization. And it dates back to 2020 um, and it's available. So there, there's, um, I think it is an extremely interesting concept. Uh, either organization is not an onerous amount of money they both are using the same exact equipment. And in fact, the equipment that Skyglass is using is just a different color, color case of the same one as the other one. <laughs> so who's, who, where is that historical database? Who's um, there? Hold on a second. I have a tab. And is that accessible to lay people Outside, uh, of, outside of a program such as Skyglass? Uh, yes, it is. They both, uh, uh, let me, I made, uh, I sent you a message, Greg, about this. Um, oh, really? Okay, hold yeah. on. Hang in there. Um, let me get into my, I sent it, I think it's me. Uh, let's see. Next question. Hold on. I have a lot of emails. So, yes. You have an I... underestimated amount of emails. Well, I get four, four to six hundred a day. Skyglass. Here we go. Sounds like some sort of torture. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, you just manage it. Yep. Uh, and I've been at this a long time, so I can manage it. Okay, so that's where I signed up for it. Somebody getting dental work? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, um, um, they're out sawing on the. He's um, he's working on the uh, um. um we have a young man here that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. He's, he's working on the uh, on the bay window that I sleep that I'm my bed is right next to. Right. Um, okay. It just sounded like dental work to me. Oh yeah. Know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, have fun. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sign up to Zoom. So, so the. Um... Wait a minute. I'm, I'm trying to find the email because I actually went over all this in the email. Um, ah, the hell with it. I just forget. Uh, so let me pull up a uh, Leica Aviation. Okay. So the 
Aviation Sky Glass is by uh, a company that's down in Seattle. Have I here? Yeah. Now, uh, let's see. Here we go. This website. All right. The other um, organization is ADSB Exchange. Right. All right. That's the one you've sent, Greg. Yeah. And it so, does seem to capture some things that aren't. It does. It that does. Don't show up on flight radar, which is interesting because, but but there's some that show up on one and but not the other. There's right. also there's flight aware. Or flight aware, yeah, and there, yeah. and and then right. some don't show up on any of them. Yeah. Yeah, there's a Russian so, one too that works really well for tracking U.S. military. Yeah, <laughs> well, so anyway, uh, so these are all like there's this interlinking going on between all these. If you do the if you do the what they call a feeder, um, like for the AD. SB, I think this is the way this works. If you do a feeder, you get free access to the database. Um, but the actual AD, the annual fee is only $29 for them. So like, eh, no big deal. Uh, the uh, sky glass is more expensive for the air. Pardon? 55. Right. Uh, but it's giving you the three-dimensional thing. So what I'm looking at doing, and I haven't done it yet, but I just didn't feel up to it, uh, is I am going to subscribe to both of these for a month and do an evaluation of it. Um, on the harder end of the side, uh, the, de the deluxe dual SDR feeder unit on the one website is 349. On the other, it's like 377, I think. They're the same exact unit. And what's really in there is our Arduino, I mean, uh, a Raspberry Pi 4 with two, two software defined radios in them um is it on a duck bill yep yeah um and I, ha I happen to own one of those i don't know what you're talking about those but but what do you get i mean what are you getting by doing that that you don't get by the other uh, well skyglass suggested it as having a feeder unit <coughs> I, <coughs> <excuse> me, <coughs> I don't know that we need to do it I think so there's enough I, out there. Yeah, I, I that's what I'm going to look at is where the locations of the others are if they're close enough yeah. to us to make sense to have. Um, this is the antenna. This is the antenna. Ah, but when you okay. get when you get into that bit with the antenna, you also have to look at location. I see. The, t the tower here on our property isn't easy because it has internet access, which is what the feeder needs. Yes. Um, one that's a tower that's somewhere else on the island might not have a the ability for us to have anything on it. C B no power available. C no internet available. So all of that exists here, but I don't I don't want to jump into that. Um, and the conversations Greg and I came went back and forth with. I think what we should do is just look at what they really provide now uh sky glass was talking about doing geofencing which would be a good thing for the island because we would only get if it's a cubic geofence um it would define we would define an area over the entire island and out a little ways so that anything that popped into that cubic geofence was captured is captured yep. but i have to look at how that would actually happen 
Skyglass is, ta is talking about as that as a feature in the future, but I don't, I don't buy subscriptions based on a future. Nope. So they don't have that just yet? No, no. <clears throat> the other aspect of this that I find interesting is neither of them currently offer a server-based option. And I would love to have, instead of a single individual's computer, where this individual has to be subscribed and it's on their device with their downloaded app to be able to have access to it, then to put it server-based so that the committee can thereby sign in and access it. And then we limit the number of viewers. And that's something I can look at. I, that's actually my, that's my fun stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, literally, I did, I went and dug into the sky glass and this whole thing the other night just for fun. Um, I got to tell you, the only reason I love sky glass is the 3D stuff I look at and I go, gee whiz, that's what we talked about 30 years ago in the Air Force being able to do someday. And here it is. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I go back. I ran the Tactical Air Operations Center, all fighters during Desert Storm in Saudi Arabia. All of the fighters, the entire theater, we tracked and filtered and everything else. And we had radar operators and all kinds of guys out in the field and all kinds of other stuff and data would pour in and we'd have to make sure, okay, are we getting the missions done? What are we doing? Yada, yada, yada. This took out half of that staff and threw them on off to the side. Here's this 3D platform and now a dozen people can run the entire theater doing the whole thing because you can see it in real time. Uh, what a difference. What a difference. It's mind-blowing to me. ADS has got the data two-dimensional. I, I, I just, I thought, wow, that's cool. <laughs> so that's why I wound up with Skyglass. Yeah. Well, the things that I guess I would be most interested in for the committee would be you know, to find out about the server base issue and then also um, defining the island area. To me, that, that would be really valuable. Mm -hmm. um, um, beyond those two things, it would be great to, um, to really be able to, to um, capture the data about the planes going over the island. So if there's some way, to, that's the goal here, I think, is to, you know, in terms of this part of the project is to figure out what's actually happening here. Um, you know, there's days when I'm puttering around outside and I'm, it just seems like, man, it's it's flyover Lummi Island day. <laughs> I mean, they're just every five minutes, sometimes two at a time. Um, and then well, other days it's pretty quiet, you know? So, uh, it, you know, there's scheduled planes, there's charters, there's medical, you know, there are some planes that are doing medical transport, there's construction companies, there's surveys out there, you know, geo surveys, what, you know, GPS survey, there's all kinds of stuff, military last, what was it two night last night or two nights ago, there were, I think there were four Blackhawk helicopters they went over. Did you hear those? <laughs> um, they do often. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to push the talk because he's doing a root canal. Oh, all, that's all fine. Time. Thank you. Um, so I guess uh, that's my goal. You know, it's not so, just to have a, I mean, I, I think sky glasses, I took, I looked at it. I think it's, yeah. it would be really interesting. And I think it would be ex an accessible kind of thing for people who aren't real techie and, and being able to really visualize this is what's yeah, happening. In the but area. Us, but we were really looking for the data. So we're looking for the data and that. we we cannot uh, the the subscription models do not allow us to republish that data. No, they do not. So you can't do that. Um, we do so screenshots. We do screenshots. We can we can pull data. And so this is the the thing that I want to discuss is I don't think there's a need for it to be in real time. No, no, I don't either. No. It, no. As long as we can access the historical, right, we can pull up the data we need. Yeah, um, that's so. Yeah, and then you also asked a question. Uh, somebody did at one point in the emails um, as to who would do this. The who would be 
Tark Henderson from Leica would get the subscription. I like Who is that. he? I don't know him. Uh, very few people do. The, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I see, I've seen his name on the website, but I don't know. <clears throat> he, had, he handles all of the, the subscription stuff that Leica does. Okay. Um, technical type stuff. So it's all routed through that one person and it never changes. You know, okay. boards can come and go, but Tark always stays. The, um, the, the, the one thing I want to see with this, and, and I agree entirely, I want to know if sky glass can geofence mm -hmm. and altitude fence. So if we can altitude fence so that we see in a historical record everything that flies in below 500 AGL, then we know, is there an issue with altitude? And we can take that filter on off and take a look at how much traffic is there. Is there an issue with traffic flow? And then we can go from there. But that geofence, gee, did they cross these barriers just like an aid is? Uh, uh, active defense uh, identification zone. Uh, we have one around our whole country. If you fly on into that on registered unknown whatever we scramble fighters that's how that works uh, you get on in even close to the border of the ideas and we're generally on up with fighters one place or another uh, so you know we're creating our own ideas around us and we're creating a height ceiling and then by that ceiling we wind up with a variety of different data now here's who went on it we take the ceiling off we know what kinds of airplanes, what, are they military, are they civilian, are they private, are they medical, are they whatever, because you're gonna have that data captured. You put the ceiling on and you find out who's violating the airspace by flying too low. Is it private, is it commercial, is there a pattern? Now you got information, you go to FAA, go to anybody, buy act whatever you want. Yeah, I think that that would be really great if we could get yeah. that information. So what I'm looking at um, is, Greg, what I would suggest is that we have TARC pull up one month subscription on both of them. Authorized by the president, make it yeah. so. Right. And yeah, it's because it's peanuts. I know it. Uh, you know it, it. It's petty cash. And then once I get access to the data with the TARC set up, I can then do, the, do some analysis work and give you the idea of what do we already have available to us in the way of data. There it is. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask, uh, curiosity being, uh, these airplanes that you do see, whether they are below the level that they're supposed to be or not, are they in a visual window pretty consistently from your property? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're right here. <laughs> they, they're using ground markers for where their path is going on into Bellingham. And her house and constitution seems to be a, a if you look at the map, look, look at the satellite shot and look at where constitution lays and constitution is a straight line east west from one side of island to the other side of island. It's like, phew, there we go. There's our yeah. map. And I think the Coast Guard actually uses um, Sunrise Road. Because that's generally where they go. Yeah, one uses sunrise. It goes all the way across. So where are the where are the paths that go directly across the island, and that's the paths they're they're picking. Well, and I, it's also the direct line. If you draw a direct line from Bellingham Airport to Friday Harbor, it's straight over here. This section. Yeah. It's also one of the narrowest parts of the island. So, you know, they they might be thinking, well, we'll impact the fewest people, but they're impacting the same people all the time. Uh, there's something we can do to data capture that as well visually. Okay.
Yeah, that's because, that's, because that's, not everybody's going to be running transponders. Nope. Well, there's some uh, San Juan Airlines doesn't run. Uh, let's not get into that. Uh, you, you have to be very careful about allegations. Yeah, we uh, need to verify. You need to verify before you do anything. Who does, who doesn't. Okay. You can see on other apps who does and who doesn't. Yeah, but so let's let's, let's not get into that. Let's not get through into that here right now. But I'm just saying that there is we have another set of data points that we can capture ourselves specific to this flight path. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can I can work up the technical on that as well. I like yeah. it. All right. Okay. Um, that was about all I had other than just, um, I didn't know if um, anybody had any interest in knowing or if it's something that we should include on the web website that the BIAC, the Bellingham International Aviation Committee, um, they actually are meeting that for the next, they only, they're supposed to meet every other month they cancel a lot of their meetings. So they end up meeting only usually a couple times a year. Um, they met in April for the first time this year and they're meeting again on July 14th. Um, we have something available by then. So um, I didn't know if anybody has any interest in sitting in on one of those or, um, um, you know, requesting a, uh, you can't get copies. I've been told that you can't get copies of their meetings without doing a FOIA request. Um, so I don't know if anybody had, I just thought I'd throw it out there. I didn't know if anybody had any interest. I, I kind of don't, <laughs> but uh, somebody else may. So. Well, let's capture the data. And then if we have any data that we're able to talk about committee wise and the committee's had a chance, mm -hmm. that gives the committee more than a month then there may yeah. be something to take forward to be act and say, hey, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. we, we, well, we have some concerns. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, I guess for me, it would be, if I were to attend it, it would be uh, mostly just curious what they're up to, you know, what the kind of issues they're dealing with. Um, and uh, I'm kind of hoping at some point they'll start talking about uh, electric aviation, which thus far they haven't. So as far as I know. Um, so I think, you know, it was be more of just to find out, you know, what what kind of things they're addressing. So 29 years ago, no, I take it back, 27 years ago in Alaska, we were starting where a lot of the platform for this stuff, software wise and FAA wise gets developed because the airspace that's there and the things we can do, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a lot more space to play with. DDFR, we have IFR, instrument flying rules, VFR, visual flying rules, DDFR, digital drone flying rules. And it's iterated several times. I don't know what they're calling it this week, flavor of the month, but the whole concept and construct behind it is central computerization where the vehicle that you are in communicates your flight path you put in where you're going to, it locates your GPS where you're going from. It then puts that data on into a centralized database through a cell type system. And then your flight is coordinated all the way on through by digital algorithms. That's the flight safety direction we are headed in. It'll be all automated. There'll be few operators involved until something goes off one way or another, in which case it pops up on an operator's screen who will then be able to take control of whatever and adjust. Get the picture of where it's going on. Yeah. AIS is the same, which is uh, for the shipping industry, which yeah. we, all, we also already have an AIS tracker here on the island. Anyway. Um, so I think, yeah, let's, let's focus, um, on, uh, getting stuff ready for uh, the page ready, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, 
the post ready, mm -hmm. focus on, I, I would think, uh, the good, uh, getting your committee, getting yep. something, a letter out to uh, the, yep. the 40 that you have. Yep. And bop that into the system real quick. And then in the meantime, I can, uh, we'll get TARP to, to order up the subscriptions and that's, the, that's uh, authorized by the president. So that's, yeah, that's, that's a non issue computer background yeah. data. Right. Great. And then I can, then I can start looking into the technical side of the question and give you a, a, give you a really good deep dive into what kind of data we have available Perfect. already historically. Great. Well, thanks to both of you for your time and your, your guidance. I appreciate it a lot. And um, is there any need for us to meet again in the next two weeks before I leave? That's, as far as I'm concerned, that's up to you. Uh, most of, I think, what we need to do, as long as we can do it electronically, we're fine. Okay, okay. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a visual again like this. Uh, but you okay. might want to be starting to think about uh, one of the things that public doc found was important for getting active membership in committee. What, what days and time you met. Uh, and yeah, who's, look at, look at the like a calendar too. who meets on what days. So that you're not always in conflict either. Sorry, sure. Alan. Yeah, that's that's where I was headed because like Sundays at six thirty is is every single week, almost without exception, uh, is they have a meeting, mm -hmm. and they're just like clicking along. Yeah. Um, the um, now the last two uh, there have been a couple of exceptions to that, but if they have a lot of meetings and they're always at the same exact time. So it's easy for people to predict that, um, sure. but okay. you, you're, you're going to find, you're going to get a whole bunch of people that are like, yeah, I want to be on the committee. And then the whole bunch will just fade off into the right. Maybe looking into it. What i what we found is a lot of those people pull up the video of the meeting. Right. Sure. And keep track that way. Yeah. And a lot of the, um, uh, vested interests pull up the videos and keep a track of it that way. Right. So, okay. So that's all I think I have to say today. Um, okay. You okay to end the recording? Yep, I am good. Uh, it's okay to stop. Oops, sorry.